TV2 now holiday maker here from 12:35 to hours of sport. Now it's news time. Sent in to end the terror, Gurkhas joined East Timor force. At least 20 killed as huge earthquake rocks Taiwan. Reveal the terrifying moments after Southall train crash. Tony and Cherie show their dedicated followers of fashion. From ITN, the ITV Nightly News with Dermot Monaghan. Good evening. United Nations troops, mostly Australian, but including Royal Marines and British Gurkhas, are tonight in control of Dili, the devastated capital of East Timor. They started going in 23 hours ago, and so far they've met no resistance from the Indonesian troops now pulling out, or from the thuggish militias who were against independence for East Timor. Our senior correspondent Mark Austin saw the peacekeepers go in. Tonight, arriving from Darwin, a contingent of British Army Gurkhas. By dawn, the multinational force will total more than 2,500 troops as East Timor is surrendered to international control. From just after dawn, they descended on East Timor, a fleet of Hercules aircraft disgorging hundreds of heavily armed Australian soldiers. Though this is a mission of peace, for the first few nervous hours, these men did not know what to expect. Their first job to secure the airport itself. But their greeting from the Indonesian forces could not have been more courteous, offering trucks to ferry the Australians to their barracks. Amid the destruction in the city and despite the arrival of the troops, still the militiamen lurk. Australian patrols have orders to disarm the militias and within hours they were doing just that. Determined to remove the menace from the streets of East Timor. In the first wave today, an advance party of British troops here to help the United Nations mission get back on its feet. We drove through the streets of Dili with the British head of that mission, who's just returned here and who's overwhelmed by the scale of the destruction. That's really horrible to see what they've done to the city. I mean, it's just wanton destruction. Did you ever think they would carry out their threat to do this? It's not on this scale. He took us and the commander of British forces here to the UN compound where 2,000 refugees hid in fear of the militia until conditions became so appalling they were evacuated to Darwin. Not, this isn't bad. I mean, it's not nearly as bad here in the compound uh, with, with us providing a secure environment. We'll be able to sort this out. This evening, the Australians are hailing day one of this operation a success, a day that gives hope at last to the people of East Timor. But in many ways, the first stage of this mission is the easy stage. The real test will come when the peacekeepers move west into towns still dominated by militias and where the people still live in fear. Mark Austin, ITN, Dili. Well, even today, the looting and burning in East Timor continued and people fearing for their lives were still being herded out of the country. As ITN's Julian Mannion reports. Even as the peacekeeping troops came in, the Indonesian campaign of intimidation and forced deportations went on. In the hills outside Dili, yet more East Timorese homes burned. In the city, less than 100 yards from the nearest Australian troops, I found Indonesian soldiers filling trucks with East Timorese civilians for a journey across the border into West Timor. The soldier in command refused to tell me what he was doing. Excuse me, sir. Why are these people trying to come back? I'm sorry, sir. I'm not sure. What? I'm sorry. I'm not bored. I'm not bored. Under the eyes of their guards, the East Timorese men and women on the trucks seem too frightened to tell their story to our camera. Why? 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 Off camera, relatives told us that the people were leaving under threat of their lives. Even in the port, where Australian troops negotiated with apparently friendly Indonesian soldiers. Refugees on the dockside told us that they were still being intimidated into boarding a ferry bound for West Timor, where the Indonesian government is still firmly in control. The peacekeeping troops are beginning to provide a reassuring presence, but it will take more than one day to calm people's fears. Here at the port, the word militia whispered among the crowd provokes immediate terror. In the center of Delhi, the feared anti-independence militia were still openly in the streets. This gang was plundering a food store, 
loading bags of rice into vehicles marked with the words Militia Logistics Department. They told me that they were taking their loot to West Timor. The scale of the destruction in Dili is extraordinary. The small town has been ransacked and burned from end to end. It was a terrible punishment for the people's overwhelming pro-independence vote. And it's a punishment that may not be quite over yet. Julian Mannion, ITN, Dili. And Julian Mannion joins us now from East Timor. Julian, we've just seen in your report the magnitude of the task facing this force. How long would you say before they get a firm grip? Well, we really can't say that. They are going as quickly as they can. Uh, the, to the, the problems facing them are just immense. It's not just the scale of the destruction, and you've got to really bear in mind that in the, the equivalent of an English county town, virtually every single building in it has been burned. Beyond that, you have these huddled groups of frightened Timorese. Quite often, not Timorese have actually come from the area where they're, where they're hiding. Uh, they're huddled in open spaces, uh, in and inside or next to burnt out buildings. Uh, they're looking for their own salvation, and they hope that this uh, peacekeeping force will bring it. And Julian, it's early morning there, as we can see, day two of the deployment. What are the UN forces' immediate plans? Well, the immediate plans are simply to get the full control of Dili, because at the moment uh, they really are concentrated at the airport, the UN compound, and the port just behind me over there. And beyond that, when they've got control of the town, they're going to start moving out into these other areas, uh, out west, as Mark said in his report, and more immediately than that, uh, into the hills immediately around the town, where a lot of refugees are hiding in apparently very bad conditions. Julian, thanks a lot. An earthquake apparently more powerful than the one in Turkey last month struck Taiwan tonight. And latest reports are of 20 dead. Andrew Simmons is following developments. The tragedy of another earthquake, this time Taiwan. Here, what was a 12-story hotel has crashed down like a stack of cards. This woman, one of scores of hotel guests who were asleep in their rooms when a huge tremor rocked the capital, Taipei. Remarkably, she survived to talk of the experience, along with many others, grateful to be alive, yet in deep shock, wondering how to reach safety. This is the immediate aftermath of what's believed to be the strongest quake to hit the island for more than 80 years. It measured 7.6 on the Richter scale. That's more powerful than the Turkish earthquake last month, which had a reading of 7.4. Fortunately, first reports suggest the death toll is nothing like the scale of Turkey. No one is sure of the casualty figures yet, though. The quake hit the entire island. The devastation in rural areas is feared to be worse than here in the capital. And there are now warnings that the quake has caused a tidal wave. Andrew Simmons, ITN. Here, the Liberal Democrats under their new leader, Charles Kennedy, today staked out positions against tax cuts and for British membership of the Euro today. Mr Kennedy himself said it was patriotic to be pro-Europe. Lauren Taylor reports from the party's Harrogate conference. Tonight, Charles Kennedy met the youth of the party, another chance for him to show his laid-back style of leadership. The first time in 16 years at conference, I have led the reception of the Scotch Whiskey Association. <laughs> Promoting the person rather than policies is also the theme in the Liberal Democrats' latest American-type broadcast. There are some key issues.